Robert. So let's get into the let's get into the nitty gritty here because it's it's more than numbers. You're a mathematician. You're the director of sports analytics graduate certificate and the director of actuarial science program. You have an event that you do uh, annually, which we are actually going to attend, and it's coming up um, by the time this show airs, that event will be um, passed, but then the next year we can promote it for next year, Actuarial Science Simon Lecture. I'd like you to talk about that a little bit. What are we? What do you expect to see with that? What are the kind of people? Mm -hmm. It's a nice event. Um, please talk about uh, Mr. Simon and all that. Go right ahead. Thank you. So when I first started working um, post postdoctoral fellowship, I met Ron Simon, Ron and Mary. We had lunch together and I was so impressed chatting with them. They got really excited and I said, hey, you know, we I'd love to thank you for what you're doing. And so we would like to do one of two things. Either we write a paper and dedicate in your honor or we have a conference in your honor. This is so, sort of how things work in academia. And so we decided we would do a conference slash talk. And the first one was in 2012, and it was a fantastic success. We had a gentleman named Dr. Emil Valdez, who came from the University of Connecticut, and um, actually, after me, became the, the director of actuarial science, and I learned a lot from him, from Emil. Um, but essentially, Ron is the retired CEO of Auto Owners Insurance, retired over a decade ago, but he's become a mentor of mine. He's somebody that when I just have a question about how do I live my life the best way, how do I interact with people? Uh, he's somebody that I'll just tap on the shoulder. And the actuarial science program has developed simply because of the fact that our students graduate and they come back. Michigan State's very unique, Tom, uh, in the sense that people really like each other. I, I've worn my green and white everywhere around North America, and I always get to go green when I'm walking. Go white, baby. Absolutely, man. Like we, I had a friend of mine who was an Italian guy, and I gave him like a Michigan State sweatshirt or jacket or something, and he was like, why is everybody yelling go green at me? It's like, well, get used to it. You're going to wear this. So it, it doesn't stop the sports. It, it continues on with actuarial science. It continues on with mathematics. We really like each other as, as Michigan State associated people, whether you're an alumni, a parent. There's just a connection here. And Ron symbolizes that to me. So Ron basically at one time even worked with some of our students. We worked on so basically, I would say some project work to get these kids to communicate technical ideas to perhaps a non-technical audience. And so Ron, having been the CEO of a Fortune 400 company for auto insurance, really knew how to do this. And he just imparted some of that wisdom to these kids. And I would just sit back and watch. I mean, this is somebody that just really loves being around people. And so we've been able to trade on his name, image, and likeness uh, with this uh, annual event. And this is a way for people in mid-Michigan and even nationally to come in and celebrate our program. And it's a way for them to see what our students are doing. It's a way for them to see a high level talk. Uh, this year we have Dr. Ann Hoffman, who's director of the Lindner Center at the School of Business uh, for Insurance at the University of Cincinnati. She's gonna be talking about F1 racing and simulation and how do you make decisions under split seconds? You know, human behavior is obviously a big part of designing insurance and pricing it. So it's something that we are able to just in totality bring all these groups of people together, which is part of the first segment is where I've, I've grown up since birth. It's just being around different kinds of inquiry, whether it's music. Music's a big part of my life. You know, heavy metal music has been with me since I was a teenager and it'll never go away. This is something that's been like my North Star. If I've ever stressed out, if I'm ever trying to prove a theorem, it's usually Metallica in the background or Guns N' Roses or the things that I grew up with in the 90s. Love it. And so- To give it a simplified definition for- people like myself who don't know that much about it and why that Simon lecture is important for people to perhaps attend. Go ahead. Please explain to, in, in layman's terms, why it's important for people to just have a grasp on this. Appreciate it, Tom. And thanks for giving me about 20 minutes for the caffeine to sink in and let me uh, <laughs> collect my thoughts. So in essence, in one sentence, actuarial science is about pricing and mitigating risk. So, Risk can find itself in mortality. So for example, you unfortunately die before you expected to, or your beneficiaries expected you to. Um, you could also have the risk of basically outliving your pension on the other end of the spectrum. So it was called longevity risk, where we underestimate your mortality and you're 85 years old and you unfortunately run out of, of funds. And so we're thinking about what's the optimal way to control your, your pension? How, how much should you draw? And so, 
again, one sentence pricing and mitigating risk. And usually those risks are primarily in the mortality arena, but there's other related risks as well. You have property and casualty, for example, you know, you're running your farm and you don't get enough rainfall. So how do you protect with that, uh, that possibility? So you talk about crop insurance or obviously car insurance, dental insurance, workers comp insurance. And so the notion that risk is like energy, you can either create it nor destroy it, you can just price it. And so for us, and I say us as in this program, I'm not a, an actuary, I'm a mathematician, but I'm very lucky, again, just working in the margins, working with people that do insurance. I also like to work with people in, in, in banking and finance as well. Um, but just seeing what they do is phenomenal because they're able to take human behavior in this sort of, you know, reticence to talk about mortality, reticence to talk about, you know, you should increase your car insurance because, in heaven forbid, if something was to happen, do you have enough to cover what you need? And so having that patience and the ability to elicit from people what they're really worried about and price it. And by pricing it, you can actually kind of take away some of that worry. And I think, you know, living here in the Midwest, <laughs> excuse me, living here in the Midwest, you see that there's sort of that no nonsense approach to, well, we've got to fix this and we got to move on. And again, I can't think of a single person better to me that, that signifies that than Ron Simon. Every time I've had a chance to talk to him, it's very clear cut, very caring. And I think that that's what actuarial science has progressed to become, in my opinion, having first encountered it in the, you know, the mid 2000s. Um, it's something where you price and mitigate risk, but you do it in a human way. And I think that what Ron did at Auto Owners and um, what the Simon Lecture does by presenting people who also have that, that ability to look at this somewhat esoteric abstract idea um, and just bring it down to a human level. I think one of Ron's legacies for the program has also been this course called Math 491B, where we teach kids how to communicate and we teach them by just basically unleashing them on themselves and getting them a faculty or uh, is industry mentor. And that developed so well that sports analytics really came out of that. We started just talking about, well, there's data in insurance. What about data in hockey? And that's what's progressed into sports analytics. It was really that one course that Ron Simon helped us to kind of establish that kind of thinking, along with our board of actuarial, uh, our actuarial science program board gave us this idea too. So in a nutshell, just to return to the original question, actuarial science is about pricing and mitigating risk. And in the insurance field, there's many, so there's mortality, there's property and casualty. But the idea is that once you've isolated it, how much is it worth to you to get rid of it? And, or at least to mitigate it, sorry. Um, and what level of risk is acceptable to you? So we, we talk to a lot of folks that are behavioral science. Um, anyway, I'll leave it at that. When did that occur to you? That was the question I posed to you. When that, you know, when you have these light bulb moments, is that is that what happened to you? Did you have a light bulb moment? I did. And, and it's it's that aha moment really has its history in my PhD advisor, David Kinderlehrer, um, Carnegie Mellon, kind of training me to just to talk to different kinds of people. Um, but specifically, it's when my current chair, uh, Jeff Shanker, or Jeffrey Shanker, who's the chair of the math department, um, is one of the most unique and kindest humans I've ever met. And he sees the enthusiasm that I have that I share with you about just let's, let's learn about neat stuff. He said, yeah, Albert, you seem to like all of these things. And I proposed, hey, I think that there's something here. I think we can use actuarial techniques, which I'll talk about in a second, um, financial techniques to price contracts in sports. And I don't see anybody else doing this, you know, and um, full disclosure, I, I do have some some consulting work that I do. And just being around people, you see that there's a huge interest, whether it's, you know, looking at salary cap management or whether it's looking at direct performance driven metrics for pricing contracts. So you see this around everywhere, but there was nowhere that young people could learn to do this in one course. So I proposed this and Jeff said, absolutely, go for it, enjoy it. I mean, just make sure that everything else is running smoothly. And one of the metrics for that, of course, is the Simon Lecture and how big it's become. Another, of course, I think much more important to me is to see that the kids are getting jobs, and they are. And, you know, our numbers for enrollment is up, and that's because the society that we live in trusts us, you know, to to give their their young people a good education. So all of that was there. And so sitting in this class, I'd given them permission to do it. It's like, holy cow, <laughs> I've got to come up with material. One of the things I'd seen in insurance pricing is this notion of a final average compensation. So basically, you know, if you're looking for post- retirement pensions, um, you know, what salary do you get 60% of in retirement? 
So you work a heck of a lot of overtime and you increase your, <laughs> your final average compensation. And so it's always a, a, a negotiation. Do I take the last three years or the last five years to average out your salary? Um, obviously, if you take the last three years, that's usually when you get a lot of your raises. And so it's a higher number. And so that number, what's that number? So I started to think about it. Well, using the Moneyball theorem, there are these two guys, Dwayne Rockerby and Stephen Easton. They've actually talked about the stuff that I teach in this class. In fact, we use one of their books as a, as a recommended text. They talked about how this Moneyball parameter can fit into pricing a one-year contract. And so I thought about it. Okay, fine. This gamma seems like something you're going to debate. This is something that maybe an agent you know, sitting across the desk from a general manager is going to say, no, you should use this gamma. So the question, what is that number? You know, working with a couple of my colleagues in quantitative finance, it's the same thing. How do you calibrate a model? How do you get that number? And so I started to think about it. Well, why should it be this number versus that number? You can certainly argue it. And there's certainly a case to wave your hands and say it should be this. But what is the market telling us? And so I was sitting in my office. And I thought, well, let's look at the implied gamma. We do this for finance. So this is now mixing finance with insurance. Um, the insurance part is getting that number from, let's say, a contract perspective, like paying out a benefit versus now, okay, what is that number I need to imply from what, what else? What's baseball telling me? And so sitting in my office, I just wrote maybe about 20, 30 lines of code in this, in this language we call R for statistical computing. And boom, it's there. <laughs> it's just looking at you. It's like, so 150 years worth of baseball data is just staring you at the face saying, yeah, we're we're a normal distribution plus a spike. And or it looked like a normal distribution to me at that time. So it was probably fall of 2023, sitting in my office, just trying to get some code to explain this to the students. Ironically, um, I never used that in the class. I never talked about it until this year. So it's thanks to MSU giving me this leeway, you know, in the fall of 2023, we ran it. We had between, I think, 15 and 20 students, roughly the same this year as well. Uh, there's a lot of interest from kids, but part of it is just coming up with material. Like, okay, fine, there's a book. Um, and from that course, I've had two papers, one that's been published and one that's going through the review process right now. So um, I learned from the students as much as I can ever view upon them. I think I, I it's actually kind of selfish to say that I love teaching simply because I get to, you know, you have the pressure to come up with something, but these kids, I mean, they're fantastic. They have, they don't have the same baggage we do as professional scientists, you know, with different pressure. They just want to think about neat topics. And so selfishly, I always give them a project as part of their, their course uh, grade. I just want to see what they're going to come up with. And so that spirit kind of hit me. And so it was somewhere in the fall of 2023, sitting in my office, surrounded by all my heavy metal posters and, you know, pictures of bands when I used to have a radio show as a grad student. And just, you know, you take that inspiration of, I've been around so many different kinds of things, you know, um, and just being my authentic self, you know, being a music fan that happens to, to also love sports and math is my first passion. How would you like people to connect with you? Well, in general, probably the easiest ways to get a hold of me is through my email. I, I check my email like probably every five to 10 minutes. Um, and so it's um, A-C-O-H-E-N, so A-C-O-H-E-N at M-S-U dot E-D-U. Um, I usually try to respond to people within an hour, if at the most 24 hours. I'm also on LinkedIn, just you just search for my, my name. Um, I'm really happy to to just kind of look at LinkedIn as sort of a the best connecting platform that I've been able to come across. And that's actually, I've met even people at M-S-U, ironically, people like Darian Harris. Um, who is one of the sharpest business minds I've ever come across. Um, he came to our classroom, in fact, and he came and talked to our students in this contract pricing class. And, and just, to, just to make one point, so our contract pricing class is for undergrad students, and we have a graduate certificate. And that graduate certificate is open to anybody to apply to. We run fall, spring. You'll be a MSU student uh, with a transcript. If you just Google MSU Sports Analytics, the online.msu.edu specific program page will come up. Um, and you've got, actually got a video of uh, folks uh, talking, well, specifically kind of previewing what the, the uh, program would be. We've also had some podcasts with some of our current and uh, former students in the certificate that talk about this. So in a nutshell, the best way to contact me is acohen at msu.edu. But if you'd like to learn more about this graduate certificate, <clears throat> that anybody can apply to and, and take part in um, upon admission. That is just, just searching MSU Sports Analytics and the wonderful folks here at MSU have made that search engine optimized. So it should be one of the first couple links that'll come up when you search for it. Um, but again, LinkedIn is phenomenal. That's one of the things I do with my students is that, hey, you're about to graduate. 
um, or if you're looking for a job or anything, if you'd like, I'd be very happy to to join with you on LinkedIn. And that puts you um, closer in the network to other people you might want to connect with for job searching or just connecting in general. And that helps me because students that are coming up, I can say, hey, I know so-and-so, you know, five, 10 years ago, they graduated, they're now in industry. And I'll ask that person, hey, do you mind if my student reaches out to you? It's basically just just building our Spartan network, essentially. What's your takeaway from your first uh, visit to our program B? Well, I, I just love sitting and chatting with you and Craig. I could see that you're very much immersed in the culture of Michigan State. And I think for anybody that's watching this program or listening to this, this podcast, Michigan State has a culture, just like every university does. But Michigan State's a very unique place. We all like each other. We like, like talking to each other. And we're dedicated to making sure that the next generation is aware of how much we appreciate them and what they've done for us. And you reflected that. So every time we've sat for lunch at Brody and just sat, sat and chatted and the fact that you say, hey, here's a student, talk to them. What do you, you know, they're interested in this. And I just see that in you and I see that in Craig. And it's been a fantastic just, you know, couple months knowing you just, and I hope this continues on. That was fantastic. When I first met Albert, I wasn't sure how we were going to structure the interview because it's like he's a very high level math professor. It's like, how do we make this work? I obviously picked up on the sports analytics thing, but it was like, how are we going to make this thing go for you? And um, the more I talk to him, the more he's got all these great stories. It's like, how do we not do this? <laughs> so it's like, Thank you again to Dr. Albert Cohen, my new my new brother from another mother. I love making new brothers from new mothers, but in all of it, it's all good. Thank you, everybody. My name is Papa Tom. You've been watching, listening to the Tom Matt Show. Thank you, Vanessa, for doing all the video editing and all the good work you're doing. And uh, keep doing what you do, girl. Everybody else out there, thank you so much. Please uh, sign up, subscribe, like all those good things. Send us requests, send us ideas. We're, we're down with it. So till next time, peace out. Love y'all.